Pressure. The atmospheric pressure. At sea level is one point oh five four six five. I'm on bill. I'm on my way. Square centimeters. The pressure of given mass occurs at a constant temperature is inversely. Surely there's a cutout to prevent just that. There's an override too, sir. Cuts out the cutout, you might say. What, like screwing down a safety valve? Yes, sir. You, Professor Wayman? I'm afraid so. Why? I wanted to observe some novae of minimal magnitude at 3,000 light years distance. Obviously, the signals were bound to be extremely weak, so I operated the override to make sure the computer would receive the best echoes possible. And then you switch back. Region H2. Omega, to be exact. Forgetting the cutout. Well, I must have. I thought I'd engaged it. Obviously, I hadn't. Can you repair it? It'll take time, sir. The quantum amplifier's shot. It'll be quicker to order one up on the next shuttle. I shall need a written report, Kate. Don't take it to heart, Professor. I know how much that piece of equipment means up here. Take like that. It's not Kate. In the past month, too many little things are going wrong. There are bound to be some accidents that's inevitable, but we must try to minimize them. Of course. There's an obvious remedy. Which is? Tighten up the discipline, enforce the regulations, impose more penalties. You can't treat scientists of this caliber like a bunch of school children. That is exactly how you must behave no, towards them. No, no, no. You treat them like adults, they'll respond like adults. But you're right about one thing. These accidents must stop.
Which way? Just follow the yellow brick road. What is it? Both cylinders full. I remember distinctly. You must have misread the gauge. No, no. I don't see how I could have. Listen, I hope I should save your breath. It's quite a walk back to the buggy. You're lucky to be alive. I know, sir. If Adam hadn't been there, I... What I want to know is, how did it happen? You're supposed to be an experienced lunar scientist. What about your oxygen supply check? As far as I remember, I checked the liquid oxygen levels before I suited up. And the feeder valves checked out nominal on the monitor console. As far as you remember. So you could have forgotten to check. You know how it is. After a while, the whole routine gets to be automatic. You do it without thinking. But you better think in future. This is not something you can be vague about. It literally is a matter of life and death. Well, perhaps it's because I've got other things on my mind. Like what? Earth, life back home. We all get homesick. It's not that, sir. I want to get out. Of the entire space program? As far as being on the moon's concerned. But it's part of your contract to serve up here. All right, let's call it quits. Well, it's a bit drastic, isn't it? raise it much of a life anymore. Now, wait a minute, Bill. Look, if you're punching up my history, there's no need, I'll tell you. Honours degree in astrophysics in 96, University of Southampton. Do you know what else your readout says? Vaguely. Specifically. Knight applies such originality of thought to any given problem that one comes to the conclusion he must be considered among future leading authorities in his field. It's gone sour. Have you talked to Dr. Smith? Oh, nothing to say. Other than, please, doctor, I want to go home. It can't be much fun for Dodie up there. You worried about your wife? Yes. Though isn't every man here worried about his wife? May I ask you a personal question? I don't guarantee you'll get an answer. Are you suggesting that uh, your wife is being unfaithful to you? Not already, she damn soon will be. From what evidence? Oh, it stands to reason. I've been too smug. A dedicated little scientist working for the good of mankind and all that. <laughs> well, the hell with it. I'd sooner chuck all this than lose my wife or make another mistake, maybe a fatal one. Talk to Dr. Smith. I've heard all the words I need, believe me. Adam brought me up short. Adam? What did you say to Bill Knight? Next time, double check your oxygen Not supply. Not about that, his wife. She's a dish. That's what you said. When I saw the photograph. Have you seen her? Did you say anything else? Well, I do seem to recall something about his being out of his tiny mind, messing about with microwaves up here, yes. It'll take time to find a replacement for Knight. Preferable to him dead or looking for another wife, isn't it? What makes you so sure the marriage is in danger? Oh, I think you and I better change places. How long has Bill been here? 18 months, a three one-month leave period. And how long has the lad been married? About two years. Twenty-three months, fifteen of which have been spent apart. Human beings are just. Or make alternative arrangements. So, Bill goes then, leaving you and Professor Wayman with your radio astronomy project, Cora. Can you cope? Till they find a replacement. Kate's a bright lady, unflappable. And dedicated. Oh, aren't we all? How's your idiopathic... Idiopathic, paroxysmal, atrial fibrillation, oh, ever with me. <laughs> It has been known to go away of its own accord. Let me tell you something, my love. My heart is perfectly sound. It always has been. From time to time, it has an irregular beat. It slows down, speeds up. Who's doesn't? But yours, for no apparent reason. Ah, didn't stop me from becoming an astronaut. Earth orbital, moon-based. Doesn't affect my performance. <laughs> the only way I know that the damn thing is around is by taking my pulse. So why did it abort my chance of going on the Venus probe? A somewhat longer trip than coming up here. Isn't it feasible that in a five-man crew anyone's heart could go? But the computer said odds on it would be yours. If I lay my hands on that computer, I'd scramble his output. <laughs> you don't resent being dropped from the team. Well, naturally, I was angry and disappointed. You train like mad for a special mission only to be chucked out at the final moment. And the quacks did know about this all the time. I think it was unfair. Well, that's the way the orbit goes, from apogee 
to perigee. And back to apogee again. Did you find out what Adam said to Bill Knight? It was a typically male remark about Dodie's desirability. Bill took it to heart. How long to mend the radio telescope? Well, it needs a new quantum amplifier. Why? If there were to be a delay, it'd be an idea to send Bill home for a few days. I'll look into it this afternoon. There is a tug tonight. Yes? Communication centre, sir. Director General on channel 73, on Scrambler. Thank you. I'll go. No, wait. Well, Scrambler's been confidential. Stay, stay. Good morning, David. Well, good morning, sir. Are you done? Dr. Smith's with me. Ah, oh, good. How are you, Helen? Very well, thank you, sir. Glad you're there. This also concerns you. Uh, is something wrong? The estimates for the next three years' programmes have been referred back. What, again? Blame the Venus probe. Three times the estimated cost. Oh, Signor Lecchia had a field day in the Council. He would. If that spacecraft could have been brought back, he'd have done it. But that money's been spent. It's on its way. The economies take place elsewhere, like here. Every single euro-dollar must be value for money. Every single euro-dollar is. If I'm to outwit Lecchia and company, you've got to prove that. How are the current projects going? Well, there's Cora, Blaney's astrophysics project, and Conway's doing very well on his study of foamed metal. Svensson's halfway through his observation program on the Crab Nebula. What about that fellow Partness and his new fuel? Oh, promising. Very promising. But I'm afraid he's going to need a more efficient extraction plant. So the only money-making project you've got is asking for more money. Now, look here, David. I need results, and they better be good. Helen, how's morale? Um, very good. It'll stand up to a period of intense activity? Yes. Good. Now then, David, I'm about to push you. All current projects must be completed according to schedule, if not ahead of it, and must be brought in under budget. Under budget? Well, the more we keep in the kitty, the better. Sorry about this, David, but I know you appreciate the situation. Keep me informed, won't you? Goodbye. If we're to stay in the space business, let's do it properly or not at all. Results, what with a few cosmic rays, satellite weather stations, a couple of subsurface excavations. It's the Russians and the Americans who put on the spectaculars up here because they've got viable appropriations. Not staggering around from day to day, hand to mouth. Anyway, um, thanks for the backup. Morale, very good. So it is, basically. Michelle's been having a go at me. Why? Well, he's not happy with my methods of administration. Says the discipline is lax. What do you think? I think he's talking nonsense. Seriously? Seriously. Uh, why did I ever let them talk me into this job? Are you um, asking me professionally or personally? Rhetorically. <laughs> you see, the money is squeezed we can cope with, but forcing the pace in research is a contradiction in terms. That's when mistakes are made. We all make them, Kate, forget it. It's holding up the entire project. Well, with Bill on his way home, we hadn't much of a project left anyway. Ah, you should have seen the stuff I wrote off during the training for Venus Pro. Look where it landed you. Ah, it wasn't that. Heart. Your reports were ignored. What reports? What about the accidents. Well, I never filed any. Calder isn't asking. Oh, what's the matter with the man? Well, not even one. Well, I told you before. And no action was taken. Well, of course, the training director chewed my head off, but... But nothing official. <laughs> my report's due on Calder's desk this evening. Say the switch was defective. Well, he knows that isn't true. So? He can't pass on a report he knows to be false. Well, it depends where his loyalties lie, doesn't it? With them or us. Oh, no, Adam, you're wrong. Now, look, Kate, love. Be realistic. You file a report saying you forgot to flick the switch, It'll go into big brain up there, and the next time a plum job comes up. What would your readout say? A human error on moon base which cost the radio astronomy project 20 trillion gelotis. Kaput. Finish. Mark. Defective switch. Well, knowing the Director General, it was an understatement, Tom. Well, I'll uh, do all I can, David. 
Now, the top priority is getting that radio telescope back into service. Well, obviously a replacement quantum amplifier fires out of the question, isn't it? But I'm told it can be repaired. Well, yeah, with a bit of thieving from other spares, but it'll take time. We don't have time. There are only two mechanics technically qualified to do the job. How long? The best part of six days. <sighs> Look, it's difficult, delicate work. They've got to have proper rest periods. Twelve hours on, twelve off. <sighs> it's too long. A to be the top. But if there were three of you working on it, Tom. All right. Around the clock. We'll trim a day. Thank you, Tom. I presume that during the emergency, normal athlete periods will be cancelled. How many do you? The 14. Uh, cancel or leave until we know where we stand. Oh, and in the case of Bill Knight? Well, no question. He stays on. One thing's certain, Doctor. I'm going on that shuttle tonight. If you're set on it. I am. Then there's little I can say. Seems a pity. What? Putting my marriage before Moonbase. Destroying the person Dodie loves. No, more to the point, saving the person I love. No, Bill. The man Dodie married is a brilliant scientist. Oh, I know what you're about to say. Chucking away a fantastic future, whiz kid of space, etc. Et Don't be so egotistical. I was talking about Dodie, not you. She has pride in your work. He doesn't like being separated from you any more than you do from her. But she's prepared to put up with it because she understands the importance for both your futures. Considering you've never met Dodie, how would you know? I know you. <laughs> I'll say one thing for you, Doctor. You can talk. That is also part of my job. I've had my say. Now let Dodie have hers. How do you mean? I'll have communications locate her and set up a top priority call. You tell her what you're about to do. And if Dodie doesn't agree literally word for word everything I've just said, then I guarantee you'll be on that shuttle tonight. And if she does? Oh, stop paying attention to everything Adam says. Start on it right away, will you, Jane? Right. Where? Yeah, I agree. It's a bit of a mess. Imagine if she'd been on audio. Would have blown her eardrums to shreds and scrambled her brains. I just can't believe Kate would make a mistake like that. No, this time come to us all, Tom. The edge starts to go. Age creeps. Oh, come on. She's not that old, is she? Uh, depends. Depends on what? All sorts of things. Attitude towards one's work, for example. Your well, Kate's dedicated to hers. Right. When something like this happens, you start correlating failing intellect with compulsive self-justification. Do you know what I mean? What, you mean the more you're losing your grip, the more you tend to hog the show? Well, you could put it that way. Have you mentioned this to Helen during one of your chats? Look, Helen doesn't need my half-baked ideas on psychiatric problems. Besides, telling tales on a lady isn't going to Well, you can put up with it if you like. But Kate had better not try throwing her weight around with me, that's all. Well, the unit's being repaired. She's much more sense than that's all. I carried out the normal switching operations to reset the instrument for stronger signal reception. However, due to a defective switch, the cutout failed to operate and a power surge destroyed the... Thanks, Lisa. Are you all right, darling? Yes, I am, Daddy. Not ill or something? You look all right. I had a scrape. It was my own fault. What happened? That's not important now. I wanted to talk to you. The police scooped me up from work. I was in a panic. Sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Is there something special you wanted to talk about? Yes. Quit. What? Up here, coming back home. I don't understand. I want to be with you. Well, I want to be with you as well, Bill. But what about your work? I can get another job. But you're more than halfway through your tour. It still leaves 18 months to go. But, but there'll be three leave periods. With five months between each one. You're so busy. The time will fly. What about you? Don't worry. I'm fine. You don't want me to come home. I do, darling. You know that. Well, I can leave tonight. No, Bill, no. Why not? Well, I'd hate it if you did something drastic and regretted it later. Let it ride into your next leave. It's only two months. We'll discuss it then. Will you do that, please? Do you still love me? After what I've just said. <laughs> Silly question. <laughs> Bill, get his 
leave through all right? Bill Knight is not leaving. Changed his mind? He can't be released, not now. Sir Cold is finally cracking the whip. Uh, is there another phase you can move into while the telescope is being repaired? Well, one of us could go out to sub-base Delta, spend a few days. There's an arrow beam scanner out there. We'd pick up something, but be degraded data. Keep us going. The thing is... Well? Which one? I'll leave that choice to you, Adam. Mon cher Michel, c'est pas si facile. Professor Wayman's out. I couldn't trust her. I didn't know what she'd break next. Uh, Bill, then. Oh, he's up in knots about his wife. Well, you go. Leaving them here to hold each other's hand. <laughs> That'd bring the entire place to a shuddering standstill, which is not what you're after. Well, do the best you can. We're all under fire. Oh, that's predictable enough. Do you know why? No discipline. Training for the Venus probe was cast iron, which the old man could ease up on, and we'd say how great it was. Calder's got it the wrong way round. He started too free and easy, and now you're trying to put the screws on. All he'll get's resentment, am I right? Perhaps. There you are. That's our problem. The wrong man at the top. Now, Dr. Calder is a very clever man. He's a first-class research scientist, I'm sure. Just an administrator? Well, which one of you is it to be? Go out to sub base Delta. Well, Bill, maybe Helen can get him in the right frame of mind. Dodie and I'll talk about it on my next leave. Are you happy with that? No. I suppose I have to go along with it. The time will pass quickly enough. There's a panic on. Oh? Budget problems in Brussels, and we're taking the brunt. Dr. Calder will be very pleased to decide to stay. Why? Adam and Kate could cope with our project? We need everybody. Here's my report on the radio telescope. Oh, thank you, Kate. And this is my resignation. Oh, Kate, no. I insist. But there's no call for it. I think otherwise, Dr. Calder. I'm sorry, but at this juncture, I cannot accept your resignation. Well, it'll lie there until your current project, Cora, is finished. That'll be effective from then. We'll see, Kate. So far, it's been a perfect ride. Touch wood. <laughs> We've settled into our routines, already run some preliminary tests on the equipment for the probe. All I can say is everything is normal. We're on our way. You certainly are. Everything's normal on this end. The capsule's in great shape, and the flight surgeon says you should all be enjoying yourselves. Sure we are. But you might tell the flight director the schedule's pretty full. That's what you're there for. Why don't you get some sleep, and we'll call you in ten hours from now. Okay, Control. Good night down there. Drink? Vodka and lime, please. Vodka and lime. Vodka and lime. They're really pulling out all the stops. Oh, with the money first, they've got you. Hurt? You asked me that before. No, not anymore. Just odd. In what way? I kept half expecting to see myself up there. I, I know that craft inside out and the drills and routines. Trained as a team for months. They should have let you go. Oh, another time, perhaps. And why are you here? Earning my living. Chatting ourselves. <laughs> No other reason? <laughs> Why should there be? It is a respectable profession. And behavioral studies in an alien environment are particularly fascinating. <laughs> Why? On Earth, if you're wound up, you can take a walk, get rid of the problem, let off steam. Not here. You're trapped. The pressures build up. And you're our safety valve? Not really. More a sounding board. Helping the individual adapt to his situation. Ah, yes. Your thesis, human beings are just. One question, though. Yes? Who do you unburden to? Or aren't you supposed to have problems? Oh, I've been trained to overcome them. Or so I've been told. Even the emotional ones? None of us are perfect, Adam. Huh. You've got such an unfair advantage. Over who? Me. How? Oh. The computer. It can tell you everything about me. Oh. Essential statistics, background, career, education. Much more. People's opinions, for a start. 
I ignore that part of the readout. Making one's own judgments is much more fun. Even so, I'm not in the position to push the button on Helen Smith. Consider it pushed. Background and education, I can guess. Career progression? Well, you're here, that's all I'm interested in, but... Uh, have you ever been married? I've thought about it a couple of times. Seriously? Enough. What went wrong? In the first instance, I didn't love him enough, and in the second, vice versa. Last love? But one. So I am not hiding on the moon. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, those imperfections I'd sooner find out for myself. As I said, that way is much more fun. Uh, Bill Knight is going out to Delta on this shift. Anyone going with him? Adam Blenny. What's the repair state on the damaged telescope? It's in hand. Well, Tom's doing his best. You can be certain of that. Come in. Morning. Ah, Helen. Bonjour, mon brave. Morning. Oh, take a look at these. Kate's report and resignation. Talk her out of it. It'll take Bill and me a couple of hours to get there. Give you a chance to make a few preliminary checks. All right, Adam. Once we are there, we'll call you up and start the instrument synchronization tests. I'll call you later. Enjoy the drive. Oh, and chase Tom Hill up on those repairs, won't you? I will. Hey, we must stop meeting like this. <laughs> He just left. He's going out to Delta. No, I met him in the corridor. It was you I came to see, Kate. Can we um, talk about these? I'm busy just now, later, if you like. Any time that suits you. All right. But I thought they were both fairly explicit. I'll be in my office. Seals positive. Check the oxygen supply, Billy Boy. To right. Both tanks full. Pressurization activated. Billy boy, souped up and ready to roll. You're in a good mood? Prospect of a wide open spaces. Did you check the food supply at Delta? No problem. I was told there's enough for a couple of weeks. Ah, I envy you. Time on your own. Think things through. <sighs> Let's get moving.
about lying, saying the switch was defective. Why didn't you? Dr. Calder already knew the truth. Would you have lied if he hadn't have known? Possibly, I don't know. What gave you the idea to lie? An admission that it was my fault would go on my records. And Adam said he never had to file a report on the equipment he broke during training for the Venus probe. Adam said that? He thought it unfair that I had to. And do you agree with him? Oh, yes, I do, don't you? No. These reports aren't reflected in your records unless there are lots of them indicating carelessness. They're studied for design faults or faulty procedures. Their main function is to make us and the equipment we use more efficient. For instance, here, the mistake. You say you thought you operated the switch. Was there one nearby you could have confused with the cutout? The procedure's straightforward. And you were concentrating? Yes. So there was no reason for you to think you hadn't switched over? Well, none. So when I came back from coffee, I started work and wrecked it. You don't mention anything about coffee. Well, it was only a few minutes. Who else was around? Jane, of course, Bill Knight and Adam, oh, and Tom, naturally. You're not suggesting... Anything. I just want to know who else was around. Yes? Have Bill and Adam left yet? Yes, they have. Why? Hello? Coming up to midpoint. I've always thought they should build a bar here. Halfway house. With a disco and plenty of girls. All very well for you bachelors. Thanks. How come you never got married? Would you believe me if I told you I was too wrapped up with this rubbish? Well, space. I wanted to be out there in the deep, deep night with no family hang-ups. Just goes to show you, doesn't it? It was a tough break, huh? Oh, weep not for me, old sport. I've had a lot of fun staying unmarried. I feel for chaps like you with commitments back on Earth. You find yourself working for an organization that doesn't give a damn about your personal difficulties. Moonbase 3, Moonbase 3, this is Buggy 2, over. Copy, Buggy 2, this is Moonbase, over. Moonbase, route check, coming up to midpoint, all systems nominal, continuing, out. Copy, Buggy 2. Any problems? Oh, nothing, why? Just checking. Moonbase, out. A little bit jumpy, aren't they? Sabotage! Or a mistake. Either is possible. Well, which is more probable? It's a mistake, I hope. But by the meticulous, painstaking Kate? Sabotage. Either Blaney or Knight. Which one? Adam had no reason. Neither had Bill. He wanted to go home. He wanted to resign. Precisely. He knew we'd be opposed to it. You, me, his wife. If he were desperate enough for a few days at home, it's conceivable he might have done it. But it didn't work. He had to accept we had an emergency on our hands. Which he's done with remarkably good grace, if those are the lengths he went to. I was only posing a hypothesis. Oh, some hypothesis. Sabotage. Moon Base 3 is a living organism, just like the human body. And deliberate sabotage, like cutting the jugular vein. Here are the submodule coordinates, Kate. 76204 beta. 76921 gamma. You got that? Mm-hmm. Are they active now? Yes, they are, Bill. That wraps up the preliminary test. Kate, uh, how are those repairs coming on? Oh, I don't know. I'll have a word with Tom. Good girl. I'll call you later. Right. Make sure I have a copy of those coordinates. Yes, Kate's probably got them all wrong. Give yourself the first shift to settle in, then we'll call you up and start work. Fine, Adam. You know something? I've always imagined I was a stoic. Take it as it comes. The likes of you I've never met. I don't understand. Well, you were resigning, along came the panic. Your quitting gets the chop and you take it as calmly as this. No, you've got your wires crossed, Adam. I spoke to my wife yesterday afternoon. We agreed I'd stay on to my next leave. That's odd. Michelle told me you were leaving. I was surprised you changed your mind. He said it wasn't that, that Calder had blocked all departures. When did Michelle say that to you? Well, it must have been during the afternoon. 
Brass had a meeting after the Director General phone from Brussels, uh, lunchtime thereabouts. Apparently Calder said then you wouldn't be leaving. Well, I don't get it, Adam. What was my chat with Dr. Smith about? For that matter, her letting me talk to Dodie if it was already decided. Well, I suppose it's better all round if a man thinks he's made the tough decision himself. I've got a roll. I'll talk to you in about ten hours. Yes. Take it easy. Professor, can I help you? I wondered how the repairs were coming along. We're making progress. We'll be back to you in uh, five or six days. Adam knows that already. Drink when it's done? Yes. Well, make yourself comfortable. I won't be long. Uh. How was the drive? Oh, routine. The terrain doesn't offer much variety. Yeah, it's not the sort of place I'd choose for a holiday. Trees. Hmm? I said trees. You ever been to Norway? No. That's where all my worldly possessions are. Which consist of? Oh, a couple of acres of land, pine forest and a lake frontage with a log cabin. It's near a town called Bowell. The summer it's fishing and loafing around. In the winter, ski trailing. Sounds marvelous. I'll take you there if you like. State your preference. Well, summer, I think. My skiing isn't too good, but my loafing is. <laughs> You're on. I think I'll have that drink now. Good. I was uh, serious about Norway. I never thought you weren't. Workshop routines, Tom? No problems, David. The maintenance schedules are being held to. And the repairs? Yeah, we're getting there. But keep that woman out of my way, will you? Hmm? Kate? Just warn her off. She'll get a telescope on time. Oh, but it's only natural she should be interested. Look, she's empire building. Adam was right. She's losing her grip, so she's hogging the scene. Be reasonable, <laughs> Tom. I mean, one mistake isn't losing your grip. No, Tom has a point. Scientists must not be allowed to interfere as they please. It's a matter of discipline. For instance, Adam told me during training for the Venus probe there was... Yes? Sorry to butt in, Dr. Corder. We're having trouble at Subbase Delta. Knight's behaving strangely. Would you stop by? Be right over. Calm down, Billy boy. Calm down. No, I've been thinking about it, Adam, and they can go to hell. I want guarantees, and I'd better get them. Calder's on his way. He's flipped. What's Here, happened? Talk to him. Bill, what's the trouble? You, for one. Well, I said you could talk, and I was right. Get Dodie on the line. We can have another cosy little chat lying to each other. Hello, uh, uh, Bill. Now, listen. I am going home on the next tug. Now, you agree to it, as Adam is my witness, or, or I will wreck every last piece of equipment out here. Have you got that? All right, Bill. You go home. I promise. Now, you heard that, Adam. You heard it. I heard. Now, calm down. I'll come out and fetch you, OK? All right, Adam. Ah, so he's switched off. You've got to try and stop him, Adam. I'd better come with if you. If he starts smashing up that base, it could set our work back a year. I will contact personnel and get them to send up a replacement as soon as possible. Oh, and it might be wise to replace Professor Wayman at the same time. Why all this fuss about Kate? There's nothing wrong with Kate. Adam tells me he's lost confidence in her ability to work alone. Adam and Bill, Adam and Kate, Adam and Tom, Adam and Helen, and now Adam and you. Gets around, our Adam. You haven't slept a wink since I left, have you? 
No, I couldn't. You better get a couple of hours before we drive back. There's a medical cabinet in main control. Should have second or. Why did you bring her? Well, I had to. You're in the wind up then, Billy boy. I am going home. You have my word for it. You're the only one I trust. And try and relax. We'll wake you when it's time to go. Now, if what you say is true, why is he so disruptive? I don't know. Well, how is it that our resident psychiatrist hasn't noticed the pattern? Ah, there I'm prepared to hazard a guess. She's becoming involved with you. She's what? You hadn't noticed? Aren't you concerned for her? There's an old English proverb that ends, three's a crowd. Of course I'm concerned. Everything's fine, Tom. I'm switching off now. Call you later. Okay, Adam. He's asleep. Any damage? Oh, no, it was an empty threat. I think he could have been responsible for damage to the radio telescope. Oh, my darling, Billy Boy couldn't throw a stone even if he tried. Life is much more simple than you psychiatrists would have us believe. Look, why do people behave the way they do? Billy, because he's in love with his wife. Kate? Well, Kate, it's strange, but... Kate, it's age, and me? Ah, well, me, because I'm crazy for you. <laughs> Ah, this is Norway, yes. Ah, Norway is a state of mind. Here, take a deep breath. Smell those pines. That's cool, clear air in your lungs. Mm. And through there, the log cabin aptly called the recreation room. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> no, Adam, Come no. Come on, he's out like a lion. No, I said no, and no, I meant don't no. Don't fool around with me, Helen. I'm not. Well, you're serious? Yes. I don't get it. Don't you, Adam? Well, why did you come out here with me? Because of Bill. Oh, like hell, you couldn't get I'd better come with you out quick enough. You wanted to be with me, true? Partly so, yes. Well, the part that concerns Bill is taken care of. Let's get on with the rest. No, Adam. Yes. No! But it's not that easy. <laughs> reason to believe you gave me every reason. And yet now you, you do this. Close. You do this to me. You do this. I am perfectly all right. Why shouldn't I be? I'll drive. Take it easy, Adam. It's a long way down. Okay, Betty boy. I know what I'm doing. Adam, are you sure you're all right? Never felt better. Why, what's wrong? Ah, silly heart of mine was playing up back there. Well, stop. I'll drive. No, it's fine now. Look, it's really hot, Adam. Can you turn the heat down a touch? Sure. Adam, be careful! <laughs> Oh. Oh. What happened? Oh. 
You damn near killed us. Oh. Thank God the pressure hull's not damaged. Radio's still working. I'll call for help. Yeah? Oh, David, a message from Buggy 2. They've had some sort of accident on the way back. What's happened? Well, nobody's here, but they're stranded. I'm going to pick them up now. Well, quick as you can, eh, Tom? Don't worry, I'm on my way. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. We've all got our Achilles heel, every last one of us. With you, Billy Boy, it's your wife and your love for her. Kate, it's a combination of age and reputation. <coughs> a quiet desperation. Lebrun, and start on him about discipline and personal ambition and he'll follow you anywhere. Interference is what Tom Hill can't stand, real or imagined. Even you, you're not invincible. No. Neither's Calder. He's vulnerable because he cares too much about the people around him. Once one's aware that one can fight it, guard against it. You can. He can, but I can't. I can't fight, not anymore. There's no way. No way. Get your hats on, Buggy 2. We can see you now. With you in just a moment. Soon have you out of there. It was a deliberate, though subconscious attempt to kill me. You taking himself and Bill Knight with you? At the moment, that didn't matter. I had to die. Because you'd rejected him? Oh, I'm not so egotistical, David. Because he'd been rejected for the Venus probe. He wasn't talking to me back there. He was back facing that final board. And his subconscious couldn't bear anyone else knowing that. Until it drove him to the brink of murder, at that he broke. Uh, the accidents. Bill's oxygen supply and Kate's radio telescope. Was he responsible for them? Almost certainly. Though he probably doesn't realize it. Just as he isn't aware that he played on people's weaknesses because he wanted to break them. Mm. And I've warned Earth. They know I'm sending him back. The treatment will take a long time. What about Cora? The project will have to wait. Bill and Kate need a break. I'm giving them some leave. Adam said you care too much about people. Did he? The Director General won't be pleased with the delay. I should worry. He is not my Achilles heel.
a sense of desperation about Stephen Partners these days. As if he feels time is running out. And so it is. Something I should know. I've recommended his transfer back to Earth. You might have discussed it with me first. I might. But it's my decision. There doesn't seem a lot of point in having a psychiatrist if you don't use her. Point taken. Why are you getting rid of him? To begin with, criminal irresponsibility. He made those explosives for Laubenthal. You gave him an official reprimand. Well, he's not producing results. He promised wonders for this mineralogy project of his, and so far, nothing. Shall I give you one more reason? Mm -hmm. You don't like him. Well, you don't, do you? Well, not that it's influencing my judgment, but I can't stand the man. Well, you're not alone. Most people find him hard to take. Except for Peter Conway. Mm. Which brings us back to the other subject of your intuition. Dr. Conway? Dr. Conway? It's ready, Dr. Conway. It is. So it is. Gravity off, Robert. Two isotopes already. We're sitting on top of a gold mine. I can see shells piled high with Nobel prizes. I do have a project of my own, you know, Stephen. Yes, of course. Listen, Peter, I've got to get on with it before I'm replaced. Replaced? My face doesn't fit. You know that. Call the hits my guts. Ever since I made those charges for old Loudon, told it been gunning for me. What do you say? Speed. When can I load the charging hopper? Hey, <laughs> steady on. Let's see how this lock goes first. You give it about two hours. Great. Thanks again. and gentle on the outside, but there seems to be some kind of struggle deep down. Sometimes his work's the only thing in the world, and sometimes it just doesn't matter. Just a simple manic depressive, then, eh? Up and down like the rest of us. It doesn't go up and down so much as away. 
A little further every day. Anything show on his PSR test? Nothing significant. All stresses within normal, acceptable limits. Highly intelligent, strongly motivated. Well? I don't trust tests as much as I used to. <laughs> You're a wise girl. Okay. I'll have a chat with him. It's just that I'm worried about him. Professionally or personally? <laughs> What are you planning to do with all that rock and under partners? Build a bunny club, whatever. Now, that's putting science to some real use. And you can put yourself to some real use, McAdam, by servicing that hopper that keeps seizing up. Oh. Oh, uh, Dr. Partners, I'd like a word with you. Fire away, Tom. You've been overloading the hopper trains again. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. We're on the crest of a wave. I'm, I'm a bit impatient, that's all. Yeah, I'll say. You chat up my lads, and before we know what's hit us, the hoppers are bursting at the seams. What I can do about that, Tom. Just keep out of my hair, that's all. Dr. Partners. Will you be using the reactor again? I hope so, why? Ah, then I would be much obliged if you would attend to the unloading and closing down the reactor yourself. Uh, that's your pigeon, isn't it? No, Dr. Partners, it is not. Maintenance and routine servicing, yes. But the regulations no, specifically no, 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 state... No, 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 What is this? Persecute Partners Week? I'm sorry. Look, I'm close to a big discovery and I'm in a hurry. I can't do all the fiddling little routine jobs myself. I'll just have to leave the dustpan and brush bit to you, OK? Man? Yes, I suppose in his way he was. The kingdom of heaven, he had it about him all his life. He took it with him everywhere he went, and he shared it with everyone he met. How did you become attracted to science, and of all things, metallurgy? Ibsen. Ibsen? Yes, you remember that play that Borkman said he wanted to free all the unborn metals of the earth put them to the service of man. Well, it made sense then. Then? Doesn't it now? Some of the time. Most of the time, even. When the work's going well. It's poetry and music and science, too, you know. Yes, I know. Then there are other times. Times when I feel I don't want to go on in the brave new world of cold scientific progress. Times when I want the moss on the wall. I want the foolish, meandering alleys, the beautiful old cities. Everyone's so keen to pull down. I can see that a tap for water is a great convenience, but something went out of the world when we stopped going to the communal well. You really are a romantic, aren't you? Is that bad? On the contrary, I like it. Oh, Helen, there has to be more than just scientific truth. Spinoza tried to prove the existence of God by theorem. A equals B. B equals 2. A equals 2. 2 plus 2 equals 4. QED. God exists. <laughs> I think it's the funniest book I've ever read. Truth can be intuitive. The existence of whatever. 
cannot be seen, cannot be measured, can only be sensed. You see, I didn't even know what to call it. But Mozart knew all about it. Make love, not science. I have to get back. Then would I have a right to use the reactor? This is a legitimate piece of research. When I have that element refined, I know it'll work. It's my right! I've studied Dr. Partners' findings and the conclusions he's drawn. I don't altogether subscribe to them, but that's beside the point. If he's to have exclusive use of the reactor, it'll hold back this entire department's work. But we're on the brink of a tremendous breakthrough. Surely you can see that. But since Dr. Partners isn't going to be here with us for very much longer, I think it's only fair that he should be given the facilities he needs. You're the director? Yes, I am. You can have the reactor for eight days starting tomorrow. Right? Thank you. Uh, Stephen. Good luck. Is it beautiful? I can't make up my mind. Sometimes it simply seems frightening. Oh, no. It is beautiful. Peace of eternity. Out there is the music of the spheres. The great silence. Sometimes I think it's the only reason for being on the moon. To experience that. The great silence. Why are you here? To hold my hand? David wants to see you when you're free. Found the critical mass yet? Do you know something? I think I have. Uranium's got nothing on this. This is going to knock them back on their heels. When can I have the last of my stuff from your stew pot? It's waiting for you now, should be cool. I stayed up half the night for you, Steve, so you owe me a long drink. Thanks, Pete. You're a friend. that this research has been pretty expensive. Yes, I know. wonder why you let it through. Because I'm gambling on you coming up with the answer. We need a success about now, Peter. Too much going wrong, too much expense, too little to show for it. You just define scientific research. Ah, we know that. But the council are worried about the size of our appropriations. They're sending Hauser up for a little look round. Now, I'd like to have something spectacular to show him. Well, I can't promise you that, David, but it is on the cards. If I can force the cryogenic gas into the cooling chamber at sufficiently low temperature and at supersonic speed, why, well, I'm home and dry. <laughs> Good. Uh, nightcap? Oh, yes, please. Uh, your lab reports show that uh, Stephen Partners has been using a lot of your converter time. Is that okay with you? Yes, I gave permission. You weren't conned into it? Well, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> But I really think Steve's onto something this time, David. Maybe he'll come up with your something spectacular. Mm. I'd like to think you're right. None of my business, I know, but uh, it's always puzzled me, you two being friends. Oh, why should it? You haven't got much in common, have you? More than you'd think. In a sense, you see, we're both outsiders. Cheers. Cheers. 
Um, Peter, uh, everything's all right, is it? I mean, no problems, apart from the work. Why should there be? No, 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 just checking. Been talking with Helen Smith about me by any chance? Well, it is her job. The woman's a professional warrior. No, I'm sorry, David, it's preoccupied with the project, that's all, you know how it is. Oh, don't I just... I remember when I first started work in radio astronomy, oh man, I was obsessed, I can tell you. <laughs> Listening for quasars in my sleep. Sorry. Call now. Dr. Hauser is scheduled to leave Earth tomorrow, sir, at 0900 hours. Yeah. All cleared for liftoff on schedule. The satellite reports all go, sir. Thanks, Rao. Yeah, there we are then. Degrees, Dr. Conway. Right. Open the bell hopper, Robert. does on his way. Now, Tom, when his shuttle arrives, I want the quickest turnaround in the history of space flight. Eh? So warn ramp control, will you? Don't worry, David. We'll have him on his way back before he knows he's here. Right. I want you to see that everybody on the base realizes the importance of this visit. Now, naturally, I'm not suggesting any form of deceit. All but staff have been warned to take a positive attitude, particularly in regard to answering questions. And my men are running around with fixed grins, polishing everything in sight. <laughs> good, good. Right. See you all at the reception, then. Oh, um, Helen, you got a minute? Mm. I had a word with Peter Conway a while ago. And? Well, he seemed all right to me. Cheerful, alert, full of his work. So you think I'm fussing about nothing? Well, mind you, he did kind of drift off before we'd finished talking. And he did say something rather odd. About him and partners both being outsiders. Did he now? Hmm. Oh, talking about Stephen Partners. Yeah? He's working like a maniac, trying to redeem himself by success. Yeah, quite right, too. I hope he makes it. We can do with all the successes we can get. And supposing he doesn't make it? He'll survive. Brash, hard and sensitive, is that it? He's not what he appears to be, you know. <laughs> is anyone? Yes. You are, I think. It's one of your strengths. Not much energy wasted in defences. I suppose I can take that as a compliment. Magnification. 
54,000. It really has worked? And, and, and the process can be reproduced on Earth? It can. Oh, you beauty! Peter, you may really just have saved our bacon. Now, you sure? You completed all basic Daisy. tests? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, yes, of course you have. Oh, what wonderful timing, Peter. We lay on a full demonstration for friend Hauser, of course. Oh, what with you and partners. Stephen. I mean, didn't he tell you? Oh, well, uh, yes, uh, you've both been working so hard. I mean, uh, oh, he's finally found his new fuel. Merobdium, he's calling it. Complete success in all tests. Good. Good. No, I really am pleased. Not half as pleased as he is. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Peter, would you like to go back on the returning ship to Earth? You've earned some extra leave. I'd okay it. No, no, Director. If you'll forgive the expression, what on Earth would I do on Earth? All right, suit yourself. But let me know if you change your mind. Two, two major scientific breakthroughs, eh? That was your the penny pinches. Ignition minus 25 seconds on my mark. Mark. Mark 25. Our translation force is balanced. Couple on. TA throttle auto. CDR stop button. Reset stop button. Check abort to port stage reset. PGNS mode control is set. AGS is reading 400 plus one. 10 seconds to ignition. Mark. Good, Minerva. Nice and easy now. Good for us too, Moon Base. How are you? Altitude 10,000. 8,000. 6,000. Velocity now 650 meters per second. Approaching 5,000 meters, Minerva. We're in, Wally. You are clear for landing, Minerva. Coming down now. 2,000. 62 degrees. Coming down at 19. 500, down at 17, 400, 300, 250, 200, 100, everything fine. Slight drift left. Correcting, three forward. Lights please. Down one and a half. Three forward, three forward. Easy. Picking up a little bit of dust. Contact light on. Engine stop. ACA out of detent, descent engine command override off, engine arm off. That's it, Moon Base. Get the coffee on. Will do, sir. Welcome to Moon Base. Uh, this is Calder. Nice landing, Captain. But would you report to control before your coffee, please? And all relief personnel report to Dr. Lebrun as soon as possible with their documents. Welcome to Moon Base 3. Hello, Molly. Bring me that crate of scotch. But I forget, you're in for a shock. You know how much that stuff costs these days? Hey, how's, uh, Dr. Calder? I am glad to see you again. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you. And when you finish a big piece of work, well, everything goes a bit flat, you understand? So you diagnose a simple case of post-research depression. Yeah, that's it. Well, maybe you're right. 
I tell you, Sonny, you can stop worrying about your other little lamb, Stephen Parkness. Top of the world he is. When's his demonstration due? In five minutes. Wish him good luck for me. I'll tell you something else. If his demonstration is half it's cracked up to be, you won't see our Stephen creeping modestly away to avoid the compliments. I suppose not. I mean, he's bad enough now, isn't he? With a major success under his belt. Let oh, him oh. have his moment of glory. He's worked hard for it, and he needs it. Peter Conway doesn't. There you are, caller. I wanted a few words with you before we go down to see what Dr. Partner says to offer. Dr. Smith, you look more beautiful every time I see you. Thank you, Herr Hauser. If you'll excuse me, perhaps I'll see you after the demonstration. Of course. A very charming and beautiful woman. You're fortunate, Calder. We are due in nuclear physics in four minutes. It is about your appropriations I wish to speak. The cost of your current research program. Mm. For instance, this metal-forming process of Dr. Conway. Ah, yes, indeed. Now, that really is something. No need to tell you the value of formed metal, strong, light, and its application in space technology alone. No doubt. But why could these experiments not have been carried out on Earth at a fraction of the cost? Because it was impossible to form metal effectively on Earth where the gravity is a full 1G. It was only here on the Moon in 1-6 gravity that it was possible to begin to study the problem. So, what use to the Earth is the process which can only be carried out on the Moon? On Earth it's impossible. It was impossible. By perfecting and studying the process here, Dr. Conway discovered that certain molecular changes occur. He is now able to reproduce those changes in one gravity with the use of chemical boosters. The metal will form on Earth for very different reasons, but it will form. Now, shall we go and take a look at Stephen Parkinson's new fuel? One must allow it to reach full output before measuring its results, which I'm confident will be satisfactory, if not immediately spectacular. Uh, we have a standard venting fission pile with graphite moderators. I've used our standard fuel rods, charged them with pellets of amorobium in its basic 320 state and 327 isotope. Incidentally, my calculations will be available for you in print in the next day or so. Finally, I've substituted our normal cadmium control rods for the later boron variants. Have you been able to assess fission byproducts such as strontium 90, for example? Yes, sir. And in general, there are no unwelcome byproducts. Well, I think the pile should be fully operative now, gentlemen. Uh, would you be good enough to operate the main switch, sir? Oh, I think the honor should be Dr. Partners. Yes. Easy. 120 kilowatts, that's terrific. I fail to share your excitement. Surely uranium would produce 150 kilowatt in this mini reactor. Uh, yes, sir, that is so. But Morobdiv, even at this early stage, is doing almost as well at less than one third of the fuel cost. How can you be so sure? Your Morobdiv will have to be carried back to Earth. In a nuclear tug, fueled with Morobdiv, it pays its own way. Yes. I see, of course. Dr. Partners, you have to be congratulated. We all realize, of course, how necessary it is to consider scientific progress. But it is refreshing to find a scientist who also is concerned with economy. <laughs> well, I think the Council should recognize that Moon Base 3 is a wise investment that will in time repay its costs manifold. With Dr. Conway's foam steel and Dr. Partis' new fuel, I'd say we were earning our keep. I hope, Dr. Corley, your hopes will be fully justified. Certainly, I am most impressed with what I've seen today. Dr. Partners? Thanks, sir. I think that a celebration's in order. And that includes all of you, of course. Oh, yes. Gracias, Director. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Director, but uh, I really ought to clear up here. I think I ought to start closing down the reactor. Uh, do that later. After we've toasted your success in some real earth whiskey. <laughs> yeah, how's that? Dr. Conway. Hello, Juan. I hope you don't mind me using your telescope. As a matter of fact, I do mind. Do you realize I have a heavily booked rotary system? My people resent it if their routines are disturbed. Yes, of course, I understand. I did check the book. 
There seems to be nobody down for the half an hour. No, so. no, 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 no. Stay till the next booking. Why not? No, thank you, Juan, but I must go. Dr. Conway, may I ask what you are studying? It is possible that I can help you. Oh, I wasn't studying anything, Juan. Just looking. Just looking. What does he mean, just looking? How can anybody just look? Hey, you see? Nothing has been done. Nothing. Now, this time, I'm going to make a formal complaint. Well, what do you want me to do about it? And please remember what you saw and endorse my report. Will you do that? Yes, I suppose so. Thank you. Nonsense. One more small one won't harm you. To my robbed you. Look, I really must be getting back to the lab. There's always quite a lot to clear up after these experiments. I don't want to leave it all to the lads. They've got quite enough on their plates already. If you'll excuse me. Not only brainy, but also conscientious. Many men wouldn't think of such things at a time like this. No. No, they wouldn't, would they? Uh, you can leave that now, Bruno. I'll clear up my own mess for once. And there's a lot to clear up, isn't there, Dr. Parkinson? I see. Look, Bruno, you have to understand the pressure that I'm under. I'm being pushed for results. I just did it to buy some time. How did you hope to get away with it? I mean, eventually you'd have to produce results. And I will, in a week or two, or maybe less. Providing I go along with your fraud. Bruno, I know you've got no reason to do me any favors. But if you go running to caller now, that's my life and my career down the drain. And, and worse than that, you'll be harming the whole of Moon Base 3. Would I? Well, everything in the garden's rosy now. All horses are going back to Earth, filled with the scientific genius of Moon Base 3. If any of this comes out, you'll close the base. Well, I haven't got anything else to say. I'm going to go back to the party, I suppose. Think it over, that's all I ask. Bruno Fonti here. Please ask Tom Hill to meet me in the reactor room. Tell him it's urgent. According to my survey, there's no energy. You mine it up here, send it down to Earth by nuclear space tunnel. You've got yourself a cheap fuel that'll last you pretty well forever. Well, I'll drink to that. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I'm informed that there is a fault in the Bentic reactor. I'm afraid that for the moment we must discount Dr. Partness's findings. I apologize, Ayerhauser, but it would be a mistake to accept the figures as they stand. Uh, would you come with me to my office? Oh. Another drink, Ayerhauser. Well, Dr. Partness, if you have an explanation, I'm waiting to hear it. Ordinarily, one would pity the man who is forced to steal rather than the man who is stolen from. But you have attempted to steal from science itself. I'm going to cover up this hoax for the sake of the base and your colleagues. You will return on the shuttle after next. I don't want you traveling with Hauser. Now get the hell out of here! Hey, Steve. Congratulations. Your demonstration was a great success. That's a laugh. That's really a laugh. You've lost me. Dr. Stephen Partners, nuclear magician, expert in scientific sleight of hand, and first-class Fernie. But I don't understand. It was magnificent. Far better than anybody could expect. Damn it, it was as good as uranium. 
It was uranium. I faked the whole thing. Do you hear what I said? I faked it. I'm a phony. But you don't seem very surprised. I wondered when you didn't come and tell me about your breakthrough. Steve, I'm sorry, really. Sorry? What in the hell for? Sorry you had to do it. I only faked the damn thing because of Calder. He was trying to impress that fool Horser. I just didn't have the time. Another few weeks and I'll have it licked. I know it. Well, you believe that, don't you, Pete? I know it's on the cards. Well, you know it too. You've seen the figures. Yes, I believe you. It's got to work out. There has to be a critical mass. Another two weeks, three maybe. I know I'll be home and dry. I mean, you can't make history in five minutes, can you? You know, Steve, I envy you. You what? You've had a setback, sure. But you'll survive it. Thanks a lot. And it's still important to you. Success, fame, your name on the Nobel Prize. You still want it all. And you don't? Not really. So you see, I'm a cheat too, in my way. Now you've lost me, Joe. We're misfits, Steve. Outsiders. We don't belong. It's time we got out. I'm going to be out soon anyway, like it or not. You just won the big coconut. What have you got to worry about? Nothing. Nothing at all. If you like, I'll have a word with Calder. Oh, no, that's my job. Sure. Yes, I'll go and see him when he's cooled down. He'll let me have another crack at it. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Bye, Steve. Yes. Hauser knows something's up. He's a wily old bird, but I think he'll turn a blind eye. Miss got the news of the new metal firming process to take back. Yeah. Really saved our bacon, that boyfriend of yours. Peter Conway is not. All right, all right. Only joking. Social visit? I want you to give Stephen Partners another chance. No. If you throw him out now, he'll be finished. If I don't, we'll all be finished. The man's a menace. David, please. Now, don't try and do my job for me, woman. Stephen Partis, a lost cause. Come in. Excuse me, Draco. Look, Smith. Look. I know I shouldn't have pulled a fast one. But I needed the time, and I didn't know how else to get it. I want to have another go at it, sir. No. Right, Charlie. Shan't bother you again. Congratulations. I hope you enjoyed that. I think I'll go and watch lift off from flight control. You too? Just making sure that Hauser actually leaves. Any problems? No, everything's fine. 
T minus one minute forty five seconds. GNN check complete. One minute twenty five seconds and counting. Abort transfer complete. Fifty second mark. Transfer complete. Tanks pressurized. Thirty seconds and counting. T minus fifteen seconds. Guidance internal. Twelve, eleven, ten, ten nine, nine, eight. Ignition sequence seven, at six, five, four. Ignition. Three. David, I'm sorry if oh, I... Sure, sure, sure. Me too. Let's forget all about it, yes? Yes, Tom. Negative. Has anyone authorized a special exit for any personnel? No, Tom. No one outside. Well, somebody just went out, right in the middle of liftoff. Stephen Partners, it must be. Uh, Tom? I called her. Any idea who it is? I haven't a clue, but I've sent someone to check. Well, you better get a party suited up. Whoever it is, I want him back. No, if you start right chasing him now, you'll panic. Well, keep the party on standby for the moment then, Tom. You're the boss. I'll go and talk to Peter Conway. Stephen will listen to him. Is there something I should know? Peter? Peter? Peter, are you there? Can't you find him either? Stephen! Stephen, come here. It is the coming of a new age in which I have no place. The new truths are not my truths. I think I am the perennial dodo. I belong to a thing like Athens, the mother of a mode of life which shall renew the youth of the world. A thing like Nazareth, Change is a delusion. It is of new things that men tire, of fashions and proposals and improvements. It is the old things that are forever young. I have no place here. It is time to leave. David. Partners is still inside. It's Peter who's missing. He's not in his room or the lab. But heaven, he could be anywhere on the base, and we don't know that it this is Peter out there. This was open on his desk. Moon base. This is Earth shuttle. No transients at the mode change. Beautiful ride so far. Ready with that test when you are. Michelle. Go ahead, Minerva. Moon base standing by to copy. Roger. We think it's Peter Conway out there on the surface. This is PGNS. Now, where can I contact him without letting the whole base know? Observatory. Zero, zero. Right. One, three, you come with us. Mark, check. One, four, three. Roll 81. Zero, zero, zero. Moon base calling Dr. Conway. Come in, please, Dr. Conway. Moon base calling Dr. Conway. Come in, please, Dr. Conway. Have you got any ideas? He said something about us both being misfits, that it was time to get out. Moon base calling Dr. Conway. Dr. Conway, come in, please. I have a director for you. Moon base calling Dr. Conway. Dr. Conway, come in, please. I have a director for you. He just won't answer, sir. Have you got a fix on him? Not accurately, but he seems to be about two kilometers to the southwest. Around bearing 227, I would estimate. You hear that, Tom? On our way. Juan, can you get me a picture on any of the remotes? I will try. There he is. Oh. 
Dr. Lebrun? Yes, Bruno? I've been checking. He's only got a 15-minute pack. Thank you, Bruno. He's been out there over 10 minutes already. Tom's boys will reach him soon with the buggy. If it's not too late. It's already too late. What's he doing? Just looking, Michel. Peter! Swish it off! He took off his helmet. I don't understand. He just wanted to listen. Come in. I won't keep you a moment. in my regular report to the council. Wretched paperwork. Mind if I read you a bit? Go ahead. Sorry to report accidental death of Dr. Conway. Faulty neck seal on his spacesuit. Particularly tragic in view of his recent successes in perfecting new method of metal foaming to be known as the Conway process. Further setback when Dr. Partness's experiments with his new fuel were invalidated by a fault in the reactor. However, the fault has now been remedied. Dr. Partness is continuing his work and is confident of success in the near future. You'd better make sure that that part comes true. I don't know what to say. Thanks doesn't even cover it. I'm not doing it for you. I had faith in Conway, and he had faith in you. Now get out before I change my mind. I wouldn't have had it happen this way, though. I'm going to miss O.P. You won't be the only one. <laughs> 